here is you've got to get the bead onto the hook. And the best way, if you want to buy one, is to buy a pair of these pliers that will hold your beads. And they're opposed... Um, cross-lock tweezers. Yeah, you know, cross-lock. Thank you, George. And then you can just slip it on. But when I first tied it, I realized I didn't, you know, I didn't have this long because I don't typically carry it in, in a travel kit. In, in lieu of that, what I ended up doing when yeah. I was there, you can take your bodkin and just as, as if you were, you know, doing beads or something like that, just stick it on your bodkin like this, and then just put that over top of the point, withdraw your bodkin, and then I put my thumb here so that it blocks the bead from falling off on the floor. And then just turn it over and then move it down to the, uh, the eye of the hook and then just reclamp it. Uh, once you've got the bead resting up against the, the, uh, the eye of the, the hook, just go ahead and put your, wind your thread on. Is this a tie along right now, or? Uh, yes, you can tie along. I'm, I'm not going to move very fast, and uh, um, wrap your wrap your thread down around the bend, so that when you tie in this little piece of of um, fluff that you're going to tie on for the that's supposed to represent the shuck from the emerging calabatus, it'll basically be pointing down. The, the next step, if you pull out your piece of hackle, and I pick these pieces of hackle because um, you can use the base to tie on the little bit of quote marabou or fluff that's going to represent the, um, the shuck as the uh, calabatus or the insect emerges from it. from his larval, not larval state, but uh, <clears throat> nymph state. And then just take off a little bit at the base. And I presume everybody's sort of familiar with the pinch move, where you basically you just hold it, place it on the base of the hook where you want it to go, and then just Wrap your, pinch it to run the hook, wrap your thread around it once or twice and bring the thread down between your fingertips. And then you can secure it by just winding up towards the eye. And if you want, you can then just wind back down again so you can place it at a point that you're happy with it down the bend. And so what you got is a very soft piece of feather that'll just wiggle around in the water. Okay, the next thing you do is um, get the little piece of crystal flash. Anybody that's tried to take a piece of this and tie it onto a hook knows that sometimes that's not a really easy thing to do. And this is a very common procedure for anybody that's done any uh, tying with a flexible piece like this. Take it and just drop it over the top of your flying, of your tying thread and then kind of loop it like this. Loop it the whole strand in half? Just took the whole strand yeah. in half and then and now it is wrapped around your tying thread just move the tying thread so that it now positions it onto the hook. Now what you've got is you've got a long loose end and a short loose end and I'll typically just do one more wind of the thread and then I'll pull this so that 
it's not sticking out a long ways. Do a couple more wraps. And now you've got it secured. And even though it may seem somewhat counterintuitive, you put it over the top because then when you move the thread, it'll put it on to the top of the, the hook. If you try to loop it underneath, it doesn't go nearly as nicely. I can speak from experience. <laughs> so put it over the top of the thread, loop it around, and then move it onto the hook. The next thing we're going to do is to dub the body. Just I hold it in my right hand and then just take a very small piece off and then just dub it onto your thread. And then one of the things that I watched George do is you can now move that little noodle that you've got on there. Wrap it around once and you have secured that. Uh, oftentimes I think I'll watch George and he will he will dub the whole thing and then he'll hold it up and move it down. Uh, any way you want to do that works just fine. And then what I'll typically do is just finish dubbing. And you notice that I'm just putting a very, very small amount. Is that super fine? Or? No, it's a combination of, I think, rabbit hair and something else. Okay, so at this point, then I'll just go ahead and dub the body. Probably to the point where I'm going to say uh, a hook eye width or maybe a bead width behind the bead that you've got. You know, if I look at it, it's probably, I don't know, you know, sixteenth of an inch, eighth of an inch, something like that. All right. And as I look around, I think everybody's ready for the next step. Now take the crystal flash, and the instructions that I sent out basically said you can either use the crystal flash or just a piece of thread. And the ones I passed out, some of them have the crystal flash, some of them just have a tying thread that I've used for the rib. And just go ahead and wrap the rib. Are you using both pieces that were sticking out? No, no, no. See, what I did is I pulled the long piece. Oh, I got you. Okay, so that it had essentially disappeared. Gotcha, gotcha. So, wrap it forward about, you know, five, six wraps. Okay. Tie it off. And then just go ahead and cut it off. Go all the way up to the beat? Uh, no. Uh -uh. <coughs> Uh, go, go up to where you stopped with the dubbing. You should have a blank space on between the end of the dubbing and the beginning of the bead of about like a sixteenth of an inch of the width of the bead or maybe uh, you know, the width of the eye of the hook. The next is, is, is getting your piece of deer hair and putting it in a stack. And the amount of deer hair that you want overlapping the end is going to be about the same length as the body. So is it wet? So did you pull that you, off? You the, want the amount of hair that is okay, sticking over, sure, over the end, about the same length as the body. Okay. Okay. Now we're tying it on as a wing, not spinning it. We're not spinning it. Okay. It's, it's tying it on as a wing, uh -huh. and it supposedly represents the emerging like insect. That. So it's a small like that. Or 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 hey, okay. man. <laughs> This is this is how much I'll start with, and then by the time that I I clean it out, I've probably lost a good third or maybe even a half of it. So just grab the tips and then pull on the ends. Now, if you if you've got a comb, some people will use a comb to uh, to pull all the fluff out because all the under hair that's in there. The deer hair won't stack very well at all unless you take that under, under hair out. So at this point you can see how much I've got left. I don't know how much 
shows up on the. Uh, Nothing in it then. No. Take the tips, put them in your stacker. Is this enough? Probably. Points down, and then just go ahead and do the stacking process. Now, something I never understood. Butts go the other way. Yeah, the you want the tips over the eye. Yeah, the tip, the tips go over the eye. In fact, I'm, I'm just about to do that. When you're finished stacking, think about how you want to take it out. In this case, the tips go over the eye, so you'll want to turn it kind of counterclockwise so that when you pull this off, if you're right-handed, you can just reach in, grab the tips, and pull your hair out. So you got something in your hand like this. Then what I will do is I will grab it with my left hand, hold it up, measure it against the, uh, the body, and if I'm satisfied with that size, then I'll go ahead and tie it in. Okay, once you've measured it, then I will move it up to where I want to tie it in, which is right behind the bead. So at this point, you just pinch the hair, bring your tying thread up between your fingers, and then just pinch it and pull it down. And then just repeat that process a couple of times so that you've got your hair secured. And at this point, then I will tie it down. And depending upon the hair you've got, sometimes they'll flare more than others. But since you're tying mostly near the tips, uh, you shouldn't get a lot of flare. Now, do not, at this point, cut this off yet. So what I've done is I've tied the hair on, I've wound my thread forward, and then I wound it back again so that I've got a smooth surface that I've created here that I can wind the hackle on. Okay. Now, and now it's time to go ahead and take the hackle that I put in here. And at this point, since you want to use this hackle to float this fly, you don't want to use any of the fuzzy or the fluffy part. So go up to the point where you're starting to lose, lose almost all the webbing, which is probably going to be from like here up on this particular piece. You can take a look at it and see how much webbing you've got if you bend it like this. Or you can just look at it and see how much of the webbing you've got. And then I just, I'll, I'll just, uh, at this point I'll cut this off and then I'll just strip it. So what you've got is a hackle that looks with a stem. Now some people will cut it off and then leave a little bit of the, uh, the, uh, the webbing in the bottom to help secure it, but typically I, I won't do that. And on this one, you've got a, a shiny side and a dull side. And I end up tying these with the shiny side forward. Shiny side facing you. The shiny side facing to the right or okay. towards the eye. <clears throat> and then I'll s set the, the uh, the strip stem against the side and I'll take one wrap, two wraps, and then what I will do, this, the thing I, I handed out shows a little different. Then I'll take and I'll take one more wrap on the opposite side and what this does is it causes the hackle to be, end up being perpendicular to the shank of the hook. 
And it's easier, I think, to start wrapping it from that particular point. And then I'll wrap in front and secure that stem. And then I will cut the end of the stem off, being careful not to cut your thread. At this particular point, then go ahead and grab your hackle, put your hackle pliers on the tip. And then I think the article says wrap three to four times forward. And then one wrap in front of the wing. And so I will just grab it, pull it back, do one wrap, bring it up, and then tie the end of the hackle off with the thread while holding the the one in front of the one in front deer hair that you put it put one on. in front of the deer hair but of course behind the bead yes okay. and then go ahead and buffer your uh, your again your uh, threads so that you don't whack off the your yeah. thread at the same time you cut the hat. There's a lot of different ways you can tie these things off, but um, if you've got one, it really is uh, the handiest way to do them. So everybody knows how to use one of these things. Uh, go ahead and get ready. And what I will do is I'll just reach up and pull things back. And then I'll just whip, whip finish here. Pull it back. And if you've got some glue, it's not going to hurt to drop a little bit of glue down behind that bead. Okay, and then the last step that's tough. is to just come back behind, kind of put your scissors up against the... Uh, the uh, base of the hair you've tied in, and then just clip it off. Mm -hmm. So you're making the same kind of a, a head that you'd put on a uh, on an elk hair caddis, but it's on the back side. Yeah, sort of on the back side. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's 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 it. You just put floating on the, the hackles. That's it. Just put the hackle and floating that's on the it. hackles in that's the it. wing, and, yeah. and you're it. you're good to go. Nowhere else, yeah. That's cute. So it's it's.